Culinary Landscape of Eswatini is a testament to the nation's rich cultural heritage, with gastronomic exploration serving as a journey through a tapestry of flavors. From the traditional savoring of staple foods like maize to the communal aspects of preparing and sharing meals, culinary traditions become a mirror reflecting the intersection of history and the sensory pleasure in Eswatini brings together diverse of communal dying. The culinary gastronomic experience that celebrates the nation's cultural diversity and historical influences. Whether it's the aromatic spices that evoke the essence of Swazi traditions or the communal rituals surrounding food preparation, the culinary landscape becomes a living expression of the nation's identity. In this vibrant tapestry, traditional recipes that define Eswatini, as Swazi cuisine continues to evolve, the fusional, veterinary, dynamic spirit of the nation. and present converge on the dining table, inviting both locals and visitors to savor the diverse and delicious offerings that define Eswatini's gastronomic identity. In the intricate tapestry of Eswatini's culinary heritage, the art of gastronomy transcends of togetherness, creating a sensory journey through the heart and its togetherness, Creation of Swazi traditions Across the landscape, culinary artisans masterfully blend traditional flavors with modern influences, creating a symphony of tastes that resonates with the nation's diverse cultural mosaic. From the savory richness of Amgosho, um a hearty dish of maize and beans, to the aromatic allure of bunny chow, the fusion of ingredients mirrors the historical threads woven into Eswatration, Eswatinari's agricultural, Eswatinari's bounty, where locally sourced ingredients form the foundation of every dish. The journey through Swazi markets reveals a kaleidoscope of colors and textures, showcasing the abundance of fresh produce, aromatic spices, and artisanal creations that grace the culinary landscape. The act of dining becomes a cultural ceremony, a testament to the nation's commit to preserving and sharing its culinary heritage. The culinary theater in the Salutary Churches, reflection of Swazi identity, where the past is savored in every bite, and the future is seasoned with the spirit of innovation. Beyond the borders of Eswatini, the nation's gastronomic treasures unfold as ambassadors of cultural diplomacy. International platforms witness the showcasing of Swazi culinary tapestry. As the sun sets on the hills of Eswatini, the culinary journey continues to the night markets, where the soul of great Ari, the great me, Ari, 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 Ari. Create a lively atmosphere. From the indulgence of traditional desserts like kudu horn beer to the contemporary twists in culinary creations, each bite becomes a brushstroke 
in the ever-evolving canvas of Swazi gastronomy. In the pursuit of maximizing the literature for universal virtual cultural exploration, it is not just about what is served on the plate. It is a celebration of the shared human experience, but a flavorless experience. On a virtual culinary expedition, transcending borders and embracing the richness of cultural diversity, the Swazi, Swati people, the Swazis of the mountain kingdom of Swaziland, are a proud but peaceful people. Occupying a small landlocked country in southern Africa, surrounded on three sides by South Africa, and on the fourth by Mozambique, Swaziland is the Swati people, and the neighboring areas of Mozambique and South Africa. Those in South Africa, ka, 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 of Eswatini today, are named after Miswati I who became king in, after the death of his father, King Sapuza. Eswatini was a region first occupied by the San people and the current Swazis migrated from northeast Africa through to Mozambique and eventually settled in Eswatini in this century. The royal lineage can be traced to a chief named Dominii. This is still the royal clan name. About thirds of the South African and South descendants, groups have intermarried freely. Swazi identity extends to all those with allegiance to the twin monarchs, Ingwinyama, the lion, the king, and Indlovukati, the she-elephant, the queen mother. The dominant Swati language and culture are factors that unify Swazis as a nation. History Swazis have lived in present-day Swaziland since around. Ethnically, Swazis are a part of the Nguni people group, originating from the grace of Central Africa. Nkosi, Dlamini, broke from the main group and settled in Mozambique eventually moving into the area known today, Swaziland. The Swazi developed from the Nguyen, one of the Dalmini sub, groups whose separate history can be traced to about in the southern side of Delagoa Bay, opposite Maputo. There they associate with the Thames' loss of monopoly on commerce, as the Boers expanded, treaties established boundaries found monopoly on commerce. Transvaal, though there were wars with the Zulus, the Swazi king Manzini refused a British request for help in. In the Anglo-Zulu War, Shaka never attacked the Swazi during his expansionist activity. In the mid Dutch Boer an English group settled in the realm by contract with the king on various occasions. A few years ago, Swaziland has one of the highest population growth rates in the world. The rate of growth has slowed. The heavy toll of AIDS and the land added. An educational crisis developed because of the great numbers of AIDS orphans who had no one to pay school fees for them. The government decided in. It could not pay their fees either. Fifty-five percent of the population lives in the Manane to Manzini area. Three out of ten Swazis live in towns or cities. The estimated population of the common customs area Although considered as one as a voluntary area and the common customs area, the voluntary area 
by many, including World Bank, as a middle-income nation, a third world economy emerges when one looks closely on.